Uh, so welcome back guys and the next part fifth part uh, question number one is define latent defects so what is latent defect this is a very new term uh, for the fresher person but uh, maybe the interview can ask you what is latent defect so what is latent defect uh, it's a name suggests it's a type of de uh, defect or a bug which has been in the software system for a long time but is discovered now a latent defect is an existing defect that can be found effectively with inspections it usually remain hidden or dormant or is a low priority defect so a low priority defect which is from a long time period uh, in your software that is known as latent defect Okay, so next question is what is the difference between validation and verification? So it's a very basic question asked for the uh, by the interviewer to, uh, to a fresh or experienced person. So what is validation and verification? So in verification, uh, the basic uh, tagline you can say is, "Am I building the product right?" And for validation, "Am I building the product uh, right product?" So question here, the terms are same, but product right ki main sahi tarike se bana raha hu, and the validation is, "Am I building the right product?" Me product jo hai wahi sahi hai ya nahi hai. So here the difference between verification and validation. So in verification, uh, the terms come unit testing, integration testing, automated testing. and also some basic uh, common thing uh, that are regression testing system testing and beta testing and for validation there are regression testing system testing beta testing these are the common things but also some exception that are customer acceptance testing and usability testing so let's talk about a brief uh, difference between validation and verification also uh, if you want more information about these two topics then you can find my whole video up, uh, on the difference between both on my channel or uh, Yeah. So, what is validation? It is defined as a process that involves dynamic testing of the software. But that's by running it, the process validates whether we are building the right software that meets the customer requirements or not. It involves various activities such as system testing, integration testing, user acceptance testing, and unit testing. Uh, whereas, verification is defined as a process that involves analyzing the documents. This process verifies whether the software conforms to specifications or not. Its ultimate goal is to ensure the quality of the software product, design, and architecture, etc. So here is the main difference between verification and validation. Uh, verification it checks the software meets the specification or not, and whereas validation it checks whether the specifications capture the customer needs or not. So basically, verification is just to meet the requirements of the software, whereas validation is for the business point of view or the customer needs or not. So it's a type of static testing. If we talk about verification, whereas validation is a dynamic testing as the customer requirements may change time to time, and whereas a software uh, requirements won't be changed, uh, they will be basically the same. So verification there is no requirement of executing the code, whereas validation. you have to uh, execute the code so uh, for verification this process is performed by the qa team to make sure that software is built as well as the specifications in the srs document and whereas validation uh, the process is performed with involvement of the testing team So verification can be reviews, walkthroughs, inspection, dash checking, and some methods that can be used in verification. And for validation, black box testing, white box testing, non-functional testing are the methods that can be used during validation. So for verification, it identifies the bugs or errors in the development process. Validation, it can identify the bugs or errors that the verification process cannot catch. For verification, it is performed before the validation process. Validation, it is performed after the verification process. So this is the main difference between verification or validation. Also, there can be many more points uh, to differentiate between these two, which will be covered in the next video. videos The next question is explain the term test bed. So test bed is generally referred to as a digital platform that is used for testing an application. It includes an operating system, hardware network configuration, database, software application under test and all other software related issues. This all come under test bed. What is the role of documentation in manual testing? Both also uh, when when we are talking about manual testing uh, or testing we come to know about the term that is the documentation. So what is documentation? Some of the commonly applied documentation artifacts that are associated with the software testing include test plan, scenarios, cases traceable matrix so these are the basic some uh, document uh, documentation or uh, documentation may include so what do you mean by test case so test case is basically a document that includes a set of test data pre conditions expected results post conditions this document is specially developed by the specific test scenarios to ensure whether the software product meets the specific requirements or not in manual testing the test cases are executed manually by the tester without using any automated tools one can easily identify loopholes in a specifications while developing test cases Okay so next question is name some attributes of the test cases so some of the attributes are as follows there are various attributes of the test cases that can make them eligible clear and concise avoiding any sort of redundancy and they are test case id which will be unique identifier of the test case test case summary which will be one liner summary of the test case description in which whole detailed description of the test case pre request or pre condition uh, uh, basically is a set of condition which has to be followed before executing the test steps then the test steps have to be performed test data expected result and actual result that uh, basically in test case always remember you have to write down first expected and then actual and then the test result automation status date and executed by the name of the person so these are the attributes of the test cases so what is a test plan what does it include so test plan may include why where when how who and what So let's talk about more. A test plan is basically a dynamic document monitored and controlled by the testing manager. The success of the testing project totally depends upon well-written plan document that describes software testing scope and activities. 
it basically serves as a blueprint that outlines the what, when, how, and more of the entire test process. So a test plan may, must include the following details. It must include the test strategies, the objectives, the scope, reason of testing, exit suspension criteria, resource planning, test deliverables. So these are the basic test plan must include. Okay, so next question is, what is test report? What does it include? So test report is basically a document that includes a total summary of the testing objectives, activities and results. It is very much required to reflect testing results and give an opportunity to estimate testing uh, results quickly. It also helps us to reduce whether the product is ready or for release or not. It also helps us to determine the current status of the project and the quality of the product. So a test report must include the following details such as test objective, project information, defect or test summary. Okay, so next question is, what do you mean by test deliverables? So test deliverables, also known as test artifacts, are basically a list of all the document tools. So whatever the list you have for the document tools, it all comes under this and the other components that are given to the stakeholders of the software project during STLC. So test deliverables are maintained by Dwelp in support of test. At every phase of the STLC, there are different deliverables are given below. So before test facing, during testing phase and after testing phase. So before testing, test plan document is there, then test cases document, then test design specification. When uh, While we are testing the software, we write down test scripts, stimulators, test data, test traceable metrics, error logs and execution logs. And also after testing phase, we write down test results or reports, defect report, installation or test procedure guidelines and release notes. Last but not the least question of this whole video is explain STLC. So in the starting of this video, we uh, come to know the term STLC and STLC, but also I just uh, give you a simple uh, brief of STLC, but now we will come to know more about STLC. So STLC is a software testing life cycle. It's a fundamental part of the STLC, which is used to test software and ensures that the quality standards are met. It generally involves both verification and validation activities. In this, different activities are executed in a specific order throughout the software testing process. So there are basically six different phases, which we already covered in our um, starting sessions. So these are requirement analysis, testing plan, test case development, test environment setup, test execution, and test cycle closer. So for more, we will cover in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.